Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. It is Lee Gunlock, Eric, and Mark here with you beauties to finish up, wrap up part two of our top 20 player rankings ahead of the 2023 World Championship. If you watched part one, you might have said, what, one Gen G member? One JDG member? Where are the big dogs, the champions from the LCK and LPL? Well, I'll tell you what, they're taking over the top 10. That's where they're at. Yesterday was the appetizer. Here's the main course for the Gen G and JDG fans who rightfully know that their players got to be populating this type of list, this type of territory in the list, the way that they performed, the way that they executed this year. Going to be talking about them and a sprinkling of some others dropped here into the top 10 players that we are so excited about, so hyped to see heading into this world championship. We start in the final double digit spot, number 10, one of the OG smite gods and actually a polarizing figure when it comes to the jungle, Mr. Peanut or Nut God, as for some reason the LCK is calling him that nickname. Uh, but I feel like people seem to harp on the bad moments from Peanut when he's kicking people out of an Elder Dragon and kind of throwing away the game. But for the vast majority, especially in the playoff run against Genji, he was in owner's head in both series. There's two camps of people that look at some at somebody like Peanut and what he has done for Gen G. And I think you have the people that are not satisfied. They're not happy because what they want to see is the Rocks Tigers, the old SKT era of Peanut. That player is not there anymore. When you're talking about, is he the LNG Peanut where things went like that? Or is, you know, are you talking about the Elder Dragon? He's not like that anymore. This is a player that is the ultimate facilitator in the jungle right now for this Gen G team. And when he stays within that bounds, that is absolutely when this team is running on full steam because the other engine parts get to pop off for the team. Peanut has done fantastic on that this year. Of course, playing a lot of the meta junglers, Vi, Maokai, picking up good win rates with them. That Lee Sin that everybody knows him for, not a lot of that this year. Seen a little bit of that one, only about a 50% win rate. Got to be looking at that Rel jungle. I think that is a sneaky one for Peanut. Keeps him well within the reins of, you know, helping, facilitating for the team, setting up these big plays. Peanut, do not be sleeping on him at this event. He has evolved so gracefully from being that carry jungler to now being the supportive guy that props up guys like Chovy, like Pays, and is the leader for what was a younger team before they started winning back-to-back-to-back LCK titles. But yeah, we're putting maximum respect on him. How about an extra dose of respect for a 17-year-old rookie coming into the top 10 for these top 20 players' rankings? And honestly, if you don't have Pays within there, you're a little crazy. I'm, I will not accept any ranking, you know, further back for pays at this point i would only accept even a spot or two ahead that's how insane he has been this year you laid it out 17 year old rookie comes in to replace the player that arguably last year was the best in his position if not one of the best in the world and pays steps in and delivers every little bit of that damage that is necessary for gen g to be an ultra elite team heading to this world championship the biggest thing for me in these moments is pays in all of the clutch moments that were necessary in these repeat uh, championship runs in the LCK for Gen G, he would bet on himself in those clutch game five do or die type of moments. He's picking the champion that's going to be doing it. He's going to be popping off. He's making that play that is clinching things for Gen G to be such a crucial part of these back to back to back type of championships for this LCK organization and to be 17 years old. Oh, baby, we're wrapping up quite a nice present with Pays heading to his first world championship. Three pentacles in the summer split alone. And yeah, for a rookie, he does anything but shy away from the spotlight and the big moment. And I mean, he's already played and won two finals, already been to an international event. Now he's going to his second. An absolutely insane first year for this guy on the rift. And we've seen the confidence that Gen G has in playing through him. They realized, you know, we can just play the same way that we did with Ruler because we have that level of confidence in this kid. 
It's incredible. And especially, again, betting on yourself in those do or die type of moments. I know, of course, that's that knife edge. It's going to go one way or the other multiple times in someone's career, no matter how good you are. Right now, it's all coming up heads for pays. The way that they're playing, the champions that he's picking and popping off in key moments. This is absolutely a player that you do not, do not want to be letting getting those advantages, getting those leads early because you better be betting that that's going to be coming back to pay pay and pay you back with that damage. A couple of Genji guys to start off this list. Then we get to another somewhat OG jungler because Mr. Tarzan has been around for several years now, returning to the world championship. And it felt like two, maybe even three times throughout his career, we were saying, Maybe that Griffin peak was, you know, the peak, and now he's just going downwards. But 2023 LNG Tarzan, this is vintage form. This dude has still got it. Oh, man. Yes, sir. Tarzan. And that's kind of crazy and makes me feel really old when we're talking about him entering into that veteran status, thinking back to those Griffin days and thinking back to those Griffin days and the way that he was a terror in the jungle. Looking at back a repeat of that one this year in the LPL for uh, this squad. This was so fantastic seeing him be able to pop off, find this type of form again, especially in the clutch moments through that playoff run through the gauntlet. That he's is the playing big Maokai in a lot of these matches where he's popping off and having a huge impact. Again, another <laughs> player that utilized the meta, Vi, Maokai, those type of champions all littered in through there, but you get a sprinkling of some other stuff going on, of course, from the earlier the, in the year. Zach, Elise, things that are still very much within that wheelhouse for someone like Tarzan. He is a nightmare when it comes to pick and ban because you have no idea really what you're needing to take out from him in order to neutralize what effect he's going to have. I'm sorry to say it, teams. This year, I don't think you're going to find that pick to take him out and neutralize the way that he's playing individually and the way that that then affects the other players on the team. And I feel like you can count on one hand the amount of times in Tarzan's career that he's had a key Baron or Elder Dragon stolen from under his nose that completely pivots the game. He has some of the most clutch smites that we've seen out of any junglers from any region. If BLG had a better playoff run, number seven on this list is easily into the top five. Probably more likely a top three because Giga Bin has been embarrassing top laners going back to the middle of the spring split. Oh man, yes, sir. This is one of those ones where you feel you can un you feel like this is almost an underestimation of the power that is there for Bin, the way that he has dominated this year, the way that he has carried the torch for this BLG team through that top side. Jax, you throw in some Gwen, maybe a, a tiny bit of Gnar in there for your boy. He's popping off. He's having the big fights. And, you know, he's done it. He's had impacts on tanks. He's had forced impact on carries. We've seen some split pushing out of him. Even when it's not meta, we know that BLG, because they listen to Lord and Savior Ben, he says, I'm playing a carry. It doesn't matter. I'm comfortable on this pick, whether it's a Gwen, a Fiora, some other spicy stuff that I'm sure we'll get at Worlds. BLG knows that more often than not, one of their main win conditions is coming through the top side, and they're one of the few teams around the globe still emphasizing that. Yep, Renekton, Fiora, Cannon, you better believe there's going to be a healthy dose of those type of champions, those type of roles for someone like Ben, and he is a player that does dictate a change in strategy, in preparation, no matter what you feel like your strength is, you should recognize with BLG, with the form that Ben has shown us this year, that he's a player you need to have some type of strategy for to contain, to minimize the damage that he's going to be able to do to you, whether it's in one game or we're looking at a series type of effect. And yeah, that's game plan number one for anyone matching up against BLG. The game plan for the one team that's had their number the entire year is just throw 369 up there against Bin. And it feels like the last couple of series, early on it was, you know, maybe Bin getting the better of 369, but JDG still winning. But the playoff series and even some of the last ones at MSI, 369 was not just handling Bin, but he was kind of putting them in the dirt. And it's scary because this was not just the usual assortment of champions that we see Mr. 369 put up 
play for the team, you know, m m that type of mindset, playing the Orn, playing Scion, those type of champions. Maybe even throw in, I know he's still got the 200 years axis, Cassante up into that uh, pool for him. He still finds a way to pop off and he even dials up a couple of spicy champions here or there. And yes, he has been up to the task against Bin throughout this year, pretty much the only guy that has consistently been up to that level and been able to best him in these games is the way to look at Mr. 369, someone that I think, again, throughout the years, throughout the hype around the LPL, somehow falls under the radar for just how good he is and how accomplished he has become in the LPL. This year with JDG is just adding more trophies to that one. Is he going to add a world championship? Let's find out. Well, he's he's going to be starting to sweat when he sees Golden Guardians taking down BDS and sees, <laughs> oh no, Licorice coming back, the solo kill king. Oh no. Hey, that's that's Canadian Licorice. Let's put some respect on there for our hometown boy. But yes, I think that one is maybe stretching it a little bit much to say 369 is sweating over Licorice. But he, you know, he has played his role perfectly on an absolutely stacked JDG roster. I think he knows, realizes Maybe there's not as many resources to go around for me when you've got Ruler and Knight on a squad, and he has filled that role more than admirably, has been perfect for this JDG lineup. Another guy who's been basically perfect when it comes to knocking up MVPs for LNG, MVP of the summer split. It is Scout. It's like we forgot this guy is also a World Finals MVP. I know Tarzan Gala both played great in the playoffs, but Scout on this deep run for LNG was at another level. And it is so good for LNG that you, when you watch the gameplay, you see him play, you're pointing out the screen and going, that's world championship level of gameplay from Scout. That's the type of play that he had when you were able to capture it with EDG. This might be even more, actually, when you're thinking about how he has been able to play, how he has leveled up and carried the torch for LNG. Really like the gameplay that we've gotten from him throughout that playoffs, through that gauntlet run, specifically for me, the evolution really for the team to have that Tristana in the mid lane, that extra damage, that ADC popping off. He was really, really able to find a way to, to maximize that pick. And, you know, he's played the meta picks. He's been able to pull out some kind of wacky stuff. He's always matching up against some of the best mid laners in the world and having his way with them, honestly. It didn't matter if it's internationally. It doesn't matter if it's through uh, the LPL. He has been the roster change. I know Gala kind of put all things together, but... We thought Tarzan and Doing B, this team should be amazing. Never really came to. But Tarzan and Scout, well, we've seen the level that they can reach in that LPL playoffs. And that's a legit contender at this world championship. I think with that type of chemistry, that type of synergy that they've been able to show, you do have to be fearful if you are the other teams because that is an X factor that you just simply cannot prepare for. You cannot draft up a strategy that just says, okay, contain these two. Because these two, when they pop off, when they have that synergy and the draft is right, there ain't no stopping what is going on with LNG right now. And of course, Scout, major part of that in the mid lane. I think even removed from Tarzan, the way that he has performed individually and in holding his lane on, holding the pressure when it is the enemy mid laner and jungle coming through, I think has been a really strong point for Scout this year as well. Tarzan and Peanut are great, obviously. Highlight, deserving to be on this list. But they weren't selected to the Asian Games roster for Team Korea. That honor went to Kanavi, and for good reason. Again, there's so many guys taking headlines out of JDG, but Kanavi, we honestly got to start putting respect in terms of the all-time ranks because we're approaching three years of talking about him as one of the three best junglers in the world. Oh, man. Just, just put up another one on the board for yourself, Mr. Kanavi, hanging himself through. And it is fantastic because he adds himself to another one of these top 20 players list. Kanavi for JDG. What a year it has been for him. And it's been one of these years where I think even the numbers, they have room to be even crazier with how good he is. And I think what type of form he's going to show up into this world's event as right now is where I'm banking it on someone like Kanavi, this big time jungler for JDG. A big reason why they have been able to make this star lineup work has been the facilitating job 
that Kanavi has been able to do and just know exactly where he needs to be, who needs the help at the right time in these games. And we talked about at times in the spring regular season, especially even a bit in summer, that he was kind of in a slump, didn't look like he was at the same level as the rest of these all-star teammates, but both splits. As soon as playoffs were turning around, he was gapping some of these other star junglers left, right, and center, was fully two steps ahead of them in all of these early games. And the synergy between him and Knight, especially right now, is at an all-time high. Right. And again, the best thing here for him is the examples that we have seen so far from the little previews of the Asian games, the type of role that he has taken with this team Korea and stepped up. Who's going to be the damage? Who's going to be this leader right away? No matter what his name is right there in all the stats, all the scores that you're seeing and all the big plays and Avi's getting it done. So I feel like that type of form, that type of hunger is going to lead into this run for this amazing JDG squad. The theme for the top four is guys actually representing at the Asian Games, which makes sense because they're at the very pinnacle of the game. The final Gen G member to talk about is, of course, it ain't Chokey. That's a long distant memory. The three in a row LCK champion Chovy continues to have a lane kingdom, continues to absolutely terrify anybody when he locks in Yone. Oh my God, that Yone, that is the best thing that has come through, I really think, this year has been that mastery of the Yone champion for Chovy because it provides this other wrinkle to his kit. Because, of course, he's been able to play champions like Azir, even if you want to go a little bit more aggressive, something like a Silas, and been able to pop off, be oppressive to the enemy team. It's a whole nother level when we're dialing in the Yone for him and especially the way that this champion has been able to counter the, uh, the counterparts like Faker, like BDD that want to take something a little bit more safe, a little bit more scaling, get that power up for their team. Chovy says, you're going to have to deal with me now or you're going to have to deal with me when I'm taking out the rest of your team later. That's the way that my Yone goes. And I feel like, you know, Chovy is one of, I mean, probably all three top mid laners we have here there's no matchup in the world that they're worried about or that's not at the very least a flip for them or you're at least talking about them as an advantage most of the time in the laning phase Chobi, you're talking about an advantage obviously he is one of the most important members of this gen g squad for being now a veteran and now has been i mean he's been the star player of every team he's hopped on going back to griffin to hanma to drx now to gen g he's basically always been the guy and the next step on the game board for someone like Chovy, he's, uh, you know, let's check in again. If you want to be people bringing up the old time loser nickname for him, Chokey, your boy has picked up LCK title after title. Boy has been contested at MSI. Now it's time to add that world championship title. My boy, it is time for Gen G hit that full stride. Unfortunately, there's another squad, another mid laner ahead of him for how great Chovy has been we still got to talk about Knight because the playoff run absolutely incredible out of him and uh, I mean I'll tell you right now this one-two punch of JDG well the one-two punch it's a little different on the world's top 20 rankings when you got Knight here at number two and I mean this guy we've hyped up for so many years and it feels like now you're really seeing that hyped up potential we've had for so long just talked about Chovy and we're going crazy about his Yone seven games this year, 100% win rate. Knight's got that top. You dial up the Syndra for your man Knight and we're talking 11 games, 100% win rate. And he's got, uh, you know, Ari is up there with a 90 plus type of win rate as well for him. That's just how it goes. I guess when you're winning almost everything as JDG and yes, as Knight in the mid lane, this has been one of those transactions, one of these moves where you see a star player go to these one of these teams and you worry, is it going to fizzle out? Is he going to have enough room to breathe and be the type of star that we have seen him be? And it has been all that and more for Knight with this JDG team, the way that he really has ascended to an even higher level of respect right now with what we're talking about with him leading the charge like this. This has got to be the year where we see Knight make a long run at an international event. JDG, this is the team to dial it up. I mean, that's why you're almost worried that there's so much hype because now you're looking. We got Knight, Kanavi, 369, four out of the top six 
on this list are from JDG because yes, in the number one spot, probably the easiest one to say is Wooler in at JDG. And when your dual mid lane 80 carry threat is one, two on one of these lists, you best believe your tournament favorite. It's incredible to think that we are again at this time of year and we are talking about Ruler, undoubtedly the best at his position and arguably the best player overall heading to this event. Incredible stuff. This player has stepped into the LPL landscape and dominated, dominated this field, which again, the LPL has a lot of very good ADCs and a lot that are able to be hungry for kills, pick up everything for their team. Ruler has been there every step of the way. He has denied every other good ADC in the LPL time and time again. It doesn't matter how much hot heat you're bringing into that event. You're getting slammed by your boy Ruler and the rest of JDG. That bottom lane, that 200 years, that ability. I'm telling you, not just for the memes, go to that LPL TikTok because you're going to see a hell of a lot of highlights of this guy turning around 2v4s, 2v5s and picking up the kills to pick up the Nexus on the tab. We did a highlight reel of just his JDG plays. And again, better than most people's careers. Insane, insane what Ruler has been able to do. He has hit his stride alongside, of course, missing in that bottom lane. But really, Ruler on his own is one of these players where you need to be at your utmost strongest level of respect because if you're given over any advantage other than the ones that are just up for grabs, because you better believe the ones that are up for grabs, he's taken as well. Anything over there, that's too much power in the hands of JDG. JDG, as I said, four out of six, the top two spots, three out of the top four, the only team with all five starters making the cut for this top 20 list and well-deserved with how good they've been. They are far and away the overall tournament favorites, and that comes with a lot of pressure, you know, FPXs of the past, so we're a little worried, but this JDG team is a little different, not even close to those levels of FPX, so can't wait to see them hit the rift at Worlds 2023, but that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with your beauties. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on that flippity flip.